Um, to, while deciding the theme for the panel here before the awards, we were scratching our heads and saying, what is it that uh, would kind of be the right thing to touch upon as far as brands are concerned and everywhere we're going around we're talking about a lot of stuff which revolves around content marketing and we said why don't we put a panel together to understand what content marketing is all about because I still have a feeling that a lot of us are naive to the whole concept despite the fact that it's gaining so much momentum but what exactly does content marketing entail? Um, is beyond, like you mentioned, beyond digital companies, can broadcast companies, can publication companies uh, actually leverage content marketing uh, to the best uh, of their abilities? And we've got quite an eclectic panel that's going to be talking about this, informing us exactly about what content marketing is all about. And with a loud round of applause, please support our panelists here. I'm going to be calling on stage uh, your name one by one, request you to please come up and take your place. Our uh, moderator for this particular panel discussion is Mr. Avik Chattopadhyay, co-founder brand strategy firm Experian. Guys, we've only got to start it. We need to get some energy rolling on the floor. And there's a standard ins instruction to all the speakers, unless you're happy with the kind of applause that you get, you're not going to start. Are you happy with that, Avik? Okay, <laughs> as an afterthought, like, yeah, yeah. Avik has been in the automotive industry for the past 22 years and now he started off with Experian. I'm going to be calling out your panelist names, Avik. Uh, Mr. Anand Ramakrishnan, Head Content and Digital Marketing, HCL Technology. <laughs> Ms. Radhika Binani, Chief Product Officer, PolicyBazaar.com. Satinder Juneja, VP Sales and Marketing, NIIT Technology. <laughs> Mr. Ashwin Patmanabhan, COO, Reliance Broadcast. <laughs> and do we have Rashmi Kochar in the house yet? I was told that she's here. All right, we'll probably track her down and request her to join the panel. Rashmi Kocha is the Director of Marketing, Amami Corporation. We have exactly 45 minutes. Do spare some time for a Q&A session with the audience. So effectively, say about 35 minutes for the panel discussion in 10 minutes, maybe. Thank you. Uh, 
मैं राधिका बनानी मैनेज द प्रोडक्ट एंड पॉलिसी बाजार प्राइवेट टू पॉलिसी बाजार आई स्टार्ट माय करियर विद हिंदुस्तान लीवर एंड स्पेंड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम एट सिटी बैंक डूइंग सेल्स एंड मैनेजमेंट सो नथिंग टू डू विद डिजिटल बट नाउ मूविंग टू द डिजिटल वर्ल्ड आई थिंक कम्युनिकेटिंग विद रियल कस्टमर्स इज टू ट्रांसलेट इनटू डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन दैट्स व्हाट आई डू अश्विन सो आई एम अश्विन पद्मनाभन एंड आई एम द चीफ ऑपरेटिंग ऑफिसर एट क्लाइंट्स पॉडकास्ट Uh, we run a network of 45 radio stations under the brand name 92.7 KFM. Uh, we also run two TV channels, uh, Big Magic, uh, which is Hindi GEC, and uh, Big Ganga, which is Kochipuri uh, GEC. Uh, it's been a 10-year journey for me in the media space. Uh, before that, it was technology, uh, biotechnology actually. Uh, I had my own startup about 15 years back. So it's been different things, including a photography company. I brought in getting images into India. Uh, there was about 15 years back, so multiple things. Uh, it's been interesting, but one thing which has been part of all this journey has been content uh, and content creation. So look forward to what we speak about. Great, sir, so, Ashwin. So, so I'll start with you. Uh, given your journey of content, right from uh, images to radio to whatever else you've done in, in the spectrum. Uh, before we get discussing on certain aspects of of this key animal or the three animal that we have, uh, how would you describe content marketing from your perspective? Uh, you know, very early in uh, my career, I realized that uh, when I made this mistake, I realized it, is that uh, don't start from yourself, start from the consumer. And uh, if you were able to understand the consumer and understand what he or she wants. And you're able to then find a, form, a point of intersection, which is your brand's messaging and what the consumer wants. You should be able to create content which works. Now, is that going to be brilliant content? Is that going to be engaging content? Is that really going to be very entertaining? Is where the creative process comes in. But the strategy part of it is to identify this point of intersection. And usually, uh, in my experience over these 15 years of creating content. Uh, I realized that we typically go terribly wrong in this initial phase of content creation uh, and identification of what should be the communication itself. Uh, that's been my biggest learning over these years. Uh, the second thing is that uh, is a creative part of it. The creative part of it is not dependent upon not just uh, data points of the consumer. My experience says that. Yeah, today in digital marketing, a lot of us have humongous amount of data about the consumer in terms of uh, facts and figures. Uh, but to decipher that into psychographics is where I see a bigger challenge. Because content works when you understand the consumer not just as math, data points, but as a human being, as a person who's got emotions, who's got feelings, who responds to it. And, uh, that's the second learning that we had over this, I had over this journey. And how to map and bring in human emotions, how to map yourself to psychographics of consumer and then create content which works. These are the two biggest learning points I've had. And I believe that if we keep these two in mind, you'll typically get to the consumer or the message you want. Very interesting. Thanks, Ashwin. Uh, Radhika, according to you, how would you describe content, especially from the perspective of what you do right now? So content marketing, just as definition, and bring out three or four points where, which which I nuance it a little more. So basically, it is relevant communication, consistent and measurable communication that we can do to the customer along his life cycle. So by relevant, in some sense, what uh, Ashwin was talking about in terms of uh, consumer personas. So at uh, when the guy is at 50 years old, I don't want to be talking to him about how you should start planning for your retirement or even as a 20. I, I have to look at the right age for me to start talking about how somebody can manage his finances. And consistent is not only about brand imagery, brand communication consistency. I think from a marketer's point of view, keeping the go at communication. It's not about putting, developing 100 videos, one shot, putting it in, or some 50 different infographics and putting it in, but how we can consistently keep the pedal on, on content 
uh, and throughout the life cycle, that's quite important because we always keep them talking about content is good for top of funnel or is it good for, it's not very good for bottom of funnel. But for example, if the guy is going to buy a mutual fund or if he's going to buy a term insurance policy, I need to be able to communicate to him through simple calculators or simple, uh, uh, say, infographics which he can just do a comparison and buy. And that's the reason of our existence how you can compare various financial products and make it relevant to the customer. So these are three key points, relevant, consistent, and throughout the customer's brand journey. Interesting. Uh, Anand, given that a large part of your life, or like most of your life has been more B2B in your interfaces, how would you describe content market? It's interesting because, um, you know, I think of, um, a lot of companies are now moving while some people can say that you know, a company like IBM has been doing content marketing for a long time. Um, it's not really true. Um, there are lots of things about content marketing that is not there as part of the tradition. Publish a white paper, you know, brochure, and they put it out on the web. So um, I think all of us, no matter where we are in terms of you know, how many years we have spent on marketing, uh, I think all of us are learning at this point of what is content marketing in a sustainable way and how to basically get results out of it. Um, HCF, the content marketing journey has been um, relatively new. It's it's like basically one year since we have set up the team, the content marketing team. And uh, as part of my role, I had to go and meet a lot of uh, delivery people uh, because you know that's where the actual work happens. Right? The delivery folks basically work with our clients to deliver work. So one question, and then my role was to evangelize content marketing to the team. And uh, one question I got asked quite a few times was, what is content marketing? Is it using content for marketing? Yeah, absolutely it is. But the fundamental difference that I wanted to drive home was that it's not about you know, having a brochure, you know, a solution um, we described on the website. Right? It's about looking at from the other way, from the customer's point of view. What is the pain point? What, what, is, what are the uh, ambitions, what are the uh, fears of the customer, and how do we create, uh, how do we then create content and find that intersection that um, we talk about. So that's, that's really key, and it's an ongoing journey. And the second part is, we have realized that to do content marketing well, you need to have scale. If you don't have scale, you won't be able to do it well. And to have scale, you need to have systems and processes in place, and that means technology too. So we are at this point in the middle of an implementation of a tool, uh, a content marketing platform uh, tool, and uh, we are really looking forward to really getting you know much more out of it as we get there. Okay, so <clears throat> empathy, relevance, and consistency, and scale. Interesting ways of looking at the same, at, at, at the same, let's say, beast or the same problem or the same opportunity. Uh, we'll wait for Rashmi to come in, and she's from Amagi, so she would have also given us an extremely interesting perspective to content marketing from her side. But uh, Satinder, you are in the same space as Anand is. Okay? Now, would you look at this, uh, this entire concept as the same way that he has, or would we have a different perspective, or would we have something to add to what Anand did? So, <coughs> and our is a market here. First line you read in your marketing course book is be different. Yeah. So yeah, my take is a bit different. See, to me, um, few 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 elements here or, or few dots which I try to connect. So first and foremost, content is an experience to me. Now, how that gets discovered, how that gets consumed, how that gets reacted to is a different story. So content is an experience. That's important. Second part, which I have seen over the last 10 odd years that I have grappled with content. So that is where I agree with the rest of my colleagues here. We are still learning. We are still keeping with the beast and trying to figure out the size and the shape of it. So that's the second part. Third part is that technology is a huge enabler as well as a challenge. The problem on the let me tell you the enabler part you will probably know what the challenger part is. And this is true for any content. You put your sweat, blood, 
and dollars in the content, which we don't know how is it getting consumed. So give a simple example. I was going through a study by Edo, and they said that over 63% of the people, while watching TV, you know, indulge in something else. 49% text to someone. 53% do something else. But imagine somebody has put the content on TV to do this, and him or her, you know, experience all this. So distraction is humongous. Last part, last five to six years, I am seeing our patients' levels have dropped. So I tell this to my team that remember the patients' level of your reader is 140 characters. So if you can do justice to that, then you're home. Last part is the storytelling. So experience and storytelling are the paramount elements of how do you deal with content. So this is these four or five tenets, to me, if you if you handle it well, or you're trying to handle it well, probably you know you're moving in the right direction on content marketing. Interesting uh, on the on, on the subject of storytelling that you that you mentioned, because you know when I also uh, in my professional life and now I'm an entrepreneur. So when I've heard this term content marketing, I thought to myself, so what's so new about it? Okay. Uh, and you I mean, picked up storytelling. Uh, and I said, listen, I mean, we have the Panchatantra. That was possibly one of the first great instance of creating content. Okay, and it was focused content. It was targeted content. And it is content that's actually gone across the boundaries of my land to be one of the most translated books on earth. It was first translated interestingly into Persian. And then into other languages. I, mean, I have seen the Panchatantra being read in France. I have seen it being read in Italy, in their own languages, and being enjoyed. So, what's so different, and why this sudden, or, or is it that we are creating hype around it, and we created this term called content marketing? Uh, giving it a bit of a thought, I possibly, according to me, what's really changed over the years is earlier it was a one way process. I create content and I go out and I disseminate it through the media or the mediums, all the channels that I need, I need. So it is all dependent on me. Now it's actually become a two-way process. Okay, and that's what possibly makes our lives that bit more challenging. Because today what I do is completely in the context of where I am and which is contextual of who my target is. Now uh, taking this up, I would uh, come to you, Radhika, given again your, uh, the space that you are in, and also given the fact that you, you through Policy Bazaar, are possibly doing great service to the average man and woman in the street. Do you think content marketing now becoming so structured, becoming almost like a science more than an art? Uh, there might be the fear of control of brands wanting to control minds more <coughs> than actually wanting to create, which is the way it should be. I don't think uh, I disagree. Or I think control is a very strong word. Uh, I think as marketers, we don't want to be think, uh, seen as controlling a customer's mind, you want to influence and positively influence towards your brand. Uh, but in terms of the other problem, in terms of current context, the, the difference is that earlier there was one Panchatantra, you might hear it from your grandmom's uh, mouth, then there might be some books which are handwritten me down and then there will be libraries and these are your dissemination point and just staying with the same Panchatantra. But today, it's the discoverability is so wide, as in so accessible to people, and that's what is causing the problem. So to read a Panchatantra, would I go to Google to read Panchatantra, or would I go to a YouTube, though I know the same companies, but I'm talking about different formats. Uh, you go to video, uh, to YouTube to look at a video, or would you go to a specialized uh, storytelling site to talk about it? So in terms of discoverability being such a big issue, 
Uh, I think we are trying to make it more factory oriented, so in that sense more uh, uh, scientific, so that we know that we need to put in so much investment, and the investment in creating the content and disseminating the content, both are as expensive as each other, and hence because of the problem of discoverability, so when the customer comes in, you want to keep him and keep him for life, and hence that control is the word that comes to our mind. But I think uh, what I would like to believe, the, the customer comes into your site, it's about how you've laid it out for him, starting with what is he really looking for, saying, are you in your 30s, here's what are the five things that you need to do to become, uh, to get a million dollars in your bank in the next one. <coughs> if that's what I'm going to tell him, I'm sure he's going to be my customer for life and I don't mind controlling him. Ashwin, you were, you were smiling when I used the word yeah, so, you know, Anand was, Anand actually quite distant. <laughs> You know, because but, but, but I, you, know, I, you know, uh, the word control is irrelevant in today's consumer <laughs> context. You can't control him or her. You can't control the consumer. The consumer has his own mind. Uh, if we believe that we can control them, I think we are smoking dope. Seriously. Uh, you can't control the consumer at all today. The access to information, like you said, um, is so much. The first thing that what do you do, you know, and you're, you're just sitting there in that room and you spoke about this company. And as you, as I'm speaking right now, I realized unconsciously what did I do? I picked up my phone and did a Google search. That's, I didn't even know I was doing it. But I was doing it. So the consumer chooses what they want, where do they want it? and they also choose to discard it. There is, which is why, what we are trying to do is not really control, but to create a bond. Yeah, but uh, I would ask you specifically in the context that you interact with brands of shapes and sizes, uh, various intent throughout your chain. Have you seen or have you ever felt this urge in organizations to actually want to they be politely into the word influence. Yeah. Do they actually want to control? No, so uh, clearly, obviously, you want to get your message across, right? I'm trying to make it very normal. So you want to get your message across. Uh, you're right, we work with different kinds of uh, customers. So, at one extreme, there's a garment that we work with. Uh, I think we've been working for the past one year, a very interesting project. And they surely want to showcase what they've been doing in their room. Uh, they want to also showcase the change that they've brought about. And uh, we have used a storytelling format to actually bring that out. Uh, the messaging there is literally embedded. It's almost like a sci-fi movie that you don't even know that the messaging is embedded, but it gets to you. And uh, so it's done very subtly. Now, they were paranoid about wanting us to not do it on the face because they were smart. They were sensitive about the fact that the moment I do it on the face, the customers will, the consumers will reject it. But that's not the case with a lot of other marketers that we work with. Their first demand, so to say, is to be on the face product information, <coughs> being seeded into content that we create. And uh, it is almost always a disaster. Uh, we were not part of this project, but it was a project led by a brand from South. It's a kitchen brand. Uh, they did a TV show. Uh, it is called brand name. Se pyaar kare the TV se kare or something like that, right? It's a TV show. And uh, the brand was extremely excited about what they did, what they saw on the show. <coughs> the brand was all over the show. Uh, their products were all over the show, and uh, they were delighted when it was happening. A year later, I met the marketing head and I asked them, okay, we did that show, what do you think? Did it work for you? And he started saying, this was the biggest mistake of my life. I said, why? Uh, because you did this? He said, no, because I had lost the plot. I wanted to see my logo everywhere. I would see my products everywhere. Uh, I forgot that we completely screwed up the storytelling. So the show won, nobody saw it. So I saw my product there, but no consumer ever saw my product interacting with the, product, with the consumer there in the shows. Uh, that happens with a lot of marketers. When you fall in love with your own product and you forget the consumer, 
you actually commit hurricane? Yeah, uh, I also felt so. Uh, in my own professional life, I even in organizations where I have worked, uh, I've seen in people, in individuals, and also unfortunately possibly in a few organizations that there is this, there's this immense urge to control. Okay, you, you want to control people's minds and their hearts, and you think you can do that, but actually you won't end up doing it at all. You fall flat on your face. And uh, as, as we were talking about, you know, Consumers get to know more. You just went on to Google and checked the name of the organization. And I'm reminded of in the, in the 1980s, a very famous Indian historian, because Amalish Tripathi, had made a very interesting statement. Uh, when he said, uh, when he was asked about the future of history, and he said, uh, he used a statement, he said, as facts pile upon facts, <laughs> we get to know more and more about less and less. Okay? And so in that context, Adhinder, uh, technology obviously plays an extremely important role today uh, in, in creating content, in curating content, and then disseminating it. So uh, do you ever see technology becoming the big daddy, or do you think content always takes control, sorry, for the word control, content always manages technology, okay, instead of technology actually becoming the Leviathan, and content almost being the slave to it. Yes, I've been a couple of uh, student leader in your college. Sure. <laughs> so it's, it's actually the other way. Actually, uh, technology is a huge enabler. And in fact, uh, you earlier related to the fact that in the last few years this has become a, a bit more known jargon and it's coming to the fact. It's because technology has permeated. So, two or three things here. One, because of technology today, and this is very true in B2B happening in B2B to C also, is the audience of one is a reality, thanks to technology. Now, I mean, one of the phenomena that has hit us in last 10-15 uh, days is Pokemon Go. Uh, one of the things that Pokemon Go is huge because it talks to, it caters to the audience of one. Yet being at a scale in millions of the numbers and huge interactions which are taking over Twitter, etc. Et so audience of one is a reality. So that has happened because of technology. Another thing which a smart marketeer can do by leveraging technology is drive the behavior. <clears throat> so I differ with you on control, but I am a firm believer that if you know your audience well, if you know your customer well, which is somebody mentioned here about customer journey, so, so you really can drive the behavior. And that is where content plays a beautiful role. So you have various form factors of content, various shapes and sizes of content. If you know your customers or consumers well enough, you can drive the behavior. Um, if, I mean, I would just want to recite a couplet here uh, in Hindi, which is very true for content marketing, which is, you know, kuch dur laga laya hai unhe baaton mein, kuch dur laga laya hai unhe baaton mein, khul jayenge aur do chaar mulaqat ho. This is what is content marketing all about. Terrific, terrific. Anand. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> Anand, how would you take it forward from here? Because uh, you know we are, we are now in an age we are also, where we are also getting exposed to new terms like uh, hyper-local marketing. Okay, we, uh, I personally had an interaction with, with Nielsen where they are working on one is to one kilometer grids and through thermal imaging and heat mapping and geostationary satellites working obviously with uh, various departments and functions in the government they are actually going to know exactly within one is to one kilometer which household is doing what when. Now in that context I mean, when, when we are actually moving into this kind of an era where our lives are not actually private anymore uh, where do you see the opportunity and do you see any fears in this? I see failures and opportunities both. As a marketer, there are opportunities, but when I put myself in the shoes of a consumer, yes. So, you know, I make it a point that um, I go uh, incognito and uh, remove my details from Blue Dive, uh, you guys uh, 
search for Google Highlights in front of the DMVs, you can actually see how much information they have on you and decide what information you want them to have and what you don't want them to have. So, um, so because of, I think, a lot of uh, laws that are in place and all the discussions that are happening, I think companies are cognizant of the fact that they can't cross the line. Right? Some of them may be doing the ethical stuff, but I think most of the big companies are taking care of it. The fact that Oracle has opened up their DMP database on you for you to control it, I think it's a big step. So, um, um, having said that, I think, you know, I think one to the earlier comment, uh, the power of one, the consumer as one, when you add technology to it, what it helps us do is basically contextualize, contextualize uh, the conversations as a brand that we have with it. There are lots of tools available. Uh, some of them, as I said, they are uh, sort of, you know, on the border of is it ethical, is not ethical, but uh, it's going to be a journey. Some of these guys are going to be doing profile legislation going forward. Some of them are open, as I said, and uh, working with those guys, I think one does not have the option to uh, really make that theory work in terms of reaching out to the customer at the moment that matters. Yeah, so, uh, it's in technologies. How much do you really invest into the market? Uh, maybe as a percentage, ballpark, as a ballpark percentage of your overall, let's say, consumer marketing spend. I would say it's in the range of 10 percent, which is very large. We have about a uh, 10 priority, and uh, we are scaling. Uh, we also have a part of the ecosystem and uh, this is what I was trying to say in terms of scaling up because <coughs> if you are a startup, you could have uh, you know, one person writing three blocks or you know, two people writing six blocks a week, that's fine. But when you are a six billion organization or even two, three, whatever it is, right? Content cannot be produced that way. You need to have a supply chain of content just like how you manufacture things in, you know, uh, Actually, you need to have some pricing of content that is always coming and you can process it and you can publish it. So there has to be technology that enables you to do it. The form of uh, systems to capture ideas, not just from marketers, but from sales, from the delivery people, even from outside. You can put that into content, marketing ideas, prepare that content, and push that into different channels and then measure it. So <coughs> tools are very good by now. That's the scale that I'm talking about. Again, this is just a tool. You need to have a supporting system outside of the tool to make actually a tool work. Good when you talk about measurement, again, okay, uh, Ashwin. Uh, how do you really measure this tool? I mean, is there just one way of measuring it, or what are there various ways you want to measure it? Are there any structured methods at this point in time, or do you see, or do you see them actually coming? So, uh, a lot of the content that we create on that, uh, on TV and on radio, uh, especially in the stuff that we do brands, most of the times, uh, there are two ways in which brands have seen that it's been effective for them. One is obviously a direct impact on the uh, product, moving off the shelf, uh, or the showroom for the world, like maybe. Uh, the second is uh, uh, you know, something that we spoke about advocacy. Uh, are you able to create advocates for the brand, people who start believing in the brand? And in fact, uh, you know, you spoke about this whole process of uh, uh, figuring out the insights. And that for me, the engine that you're developing is an insights mining engine in a way. And uh, we work with a company called Advocacy International. Uh, it's a Malaysian company. Uh, where we have used radio and digital together to run people through a process where we shortlist, let's say, 1,000 people who enroll into a program and they give it games to play. Uh, the last part of content marketing, I also believe, is engaging with the consumer. So we created engagement games which they play both on radio as well as on uh, a digital platform. And uh, as they kept on playing games, they 
learn more about the product. Radhika, how, how would you go about and measure the content that you create? Uh, so before that, just one slight detour. So when we're doing a digital campaign, so one of my ways of evaluating a digital agency is like, how will we measure? I said, okay, we'll give you views, we'll give you clicks. The agency is off. So we, because we are fortunate to be an online company, so we measure every marketing endeavor through how it is resulted in the bottom line, which is in terms of incremental visitors that come in, and out of those, how many of them gave us revenue. So we look at an ROI view, whether it is a TV campaign, because we can measure how the traffic is moved as soon as the, uh, the advertisement is aired, we you know the increase in traffic for the next eight minutes, we know it has an impact. Then any digital campaign, of course, we measure, and then we go to down to how, how has that incremental visitor converted, what's the conversion rate on the visitor. So that's something which we are, maybe because we're not as big as billion dollars company, and because we want to make every dollar count, we, we measure it. Of course, we do realize when I'm measuring content management, I could have different benchmarks. I expect it to perform 2x worse off than, uh, say, PBC. So I have those internal benchmarks I have, and which I'm comfortable with. And there's no set pattern. We keep refining it. And I, we talk around, I'm sure there is no mantra. As long as the marketing, as well as my CEO is convinced, I think they're doing good. My background is largely manufacturing, oil gas. And I have, I mean, over the years, from my experiences, what I've arrived at for myself is, if there is one way of really measuring the content, okay, it is the simple measure of accuracy. Okay, when automobile companies and after you service your vehicle or import your vehicle, you typically are sent a questionnaire. Okay, three, four questions. And I have to keep telling them, forget three, four questions, just one question. Would you recommend Volkswagen to your friend? Or would you recommend Marcus to be to your friend? That's it. If you say yes, I've done my To bring this discussion, sorry, we'll have to bring it to an end somewhere. But uh, to bring it to an end, I will just ask each one of you, one minute each on, for you, what is the one big thing that you would want to do in the field of market market? So, I, I started with experience. So, I would want to go down to the extreme dissection of that experience. And to make sure that the experience of my content to the audience of one is memorable. In whatever form factor, flavor that it is given out. So that experience through deliverability, discoverability, consumption has to be better. So I think that's also the experience. Anand. I think uh, analytics is an important area for marketing which is not completely addressed at this point. Uh, there is no ROI model that exists now that comprehensively uh, addresses that point. So to evolve such a model, I think it's going to be uh, crucial for us to really get more investment from management. Right, right now, when we go and talk about market marketing and the need for investment, there is obviously the question of what do I get out of it. Right? And it's very, very hard to justify. It. It's not like PPC. Right? So it's long. It's, it, it's a long trade time for that if that comes from <coughs> Yes, we get some leaks and all that, but it's not going to be short term. So that understanding, how do you translate that into actual hard metrics so that the industry can benefit from it? Okay, so suddenly we're talking about experience, you talk about analytics. I think I would pick co-creation, so in that sense, crowdsourcing of content, because you can go and keep finding out ways of scaling content and lining up vendors who can give you videos, infographics, etc. But it's not sustainable. Uh, so it's nothing new. Wikipedia has done it, TripAdvisor has done it. But how a standalone a business, uh, an operating business can do that, I think that's something which I would want to expect. Co-creation, interesting question. We are the business of content. So, so it's not ten percent for me. It is hundred uh, percent. I think all of this is what adds up to what we uh, do and what I would like to, you know, what we try to do every day. Uh, we spoke about co-creation. Uh, one of our biggest assets that we ever created in the recent past was this character called Chukki and Shonky. This became a YouTube page about a year and a half. Ago. Uh, this gentleman called Gaurav Kela used to be a TV actor who created this short one minute, 30 second clip out of his iPhone. It is a selfie uh, clip. 
and he used to post it on YouTube, edit it on his phone, post it on YouTube, and he became, within a few months, he had two million followers. Uh, we got him on our uh, channel, and we started working with him closely. Uh, today, what you spoke about, Radhika, we are doing this on a real-time basis. We work with content creators across the country today who create content for us out of their focus. These are audio clips, these are video clips. Frankly, uh, the role of broadcasters is changing today. Um, all of you in this room are potentially broadcasters. All of you can create content which can be seen and heard and consumed right now by all of us across the world. Uh, so, as a broadcaster, that is the power we are looking at tapping. What Radhika spoke about is actually of the paramount and the most important thing we are looking at tapping at this point in time. I, I guess that's, that's the best way to, <coughs> to conclude today's discussion, which is each one of us has the power to create. So, so we have the creator in each one of us. And as long as we keep doing that and creating better experiences, which then can be analyzed and <coughs> get better. I guess content marketing is not something that we should be discussing about anymore. We shall be implementing much better. I totally agree. I think uh, the lesson is that you don't need to be a specialist in content marketing. Everybody in this room can be a content marketer. Uh, you can create content and market it. You don't even need marketing muscle to market it today. Thank you very much. I, I hope you are on time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Avi. You are on time. I'm sorry I'm rushing you because we have our chief guest here right here. We want to hear from him. We also have Anurag Batra, editor in chief and chairman of the Exchange for Media Group, who's here. But thank you all so much for your time, Mom. And of course, we'll uh, uh, set the ball rolling. There's a lot to learn, a lot to understand. One, did you guys see the Truman Show? Jim Carrey, I think that is like a perfect example of content marketing which came out about three decades back as far as the movie is concerned. But thank you so much. I'd like to invite on stage Mr. We are going to acknowledge you formally, sir. Mr. Ranadeep Chakravarti, Head Marketing and Product Strategy First Coast, to please come up on stage and offer a token of appreciation on behalf of the Exchange for Media Group for this eclectic panel to have taken the time sharing their insights as far as content marketing is concerned. With a loud round of applause from the audience, please. All right. Avi, thank you so much for moderating this particular panel. We've got We've got Radhika Binani, Chief Product Officer, PolicyBazaar.com. We've got Satinder Juneja from NIIT Technologies. Um, we've also got Anand Ramakrishnan, Head Content and Digital Marketing, HCL Technologies. And of course, Ashwin Padmanabhan, COO, Reliance Broadcast. Thank you all. Go ahead, tweet about tonight using hashtag Top50Brands. Uh, we can have a group photograph right up in front before you all leave. Uh, like I said, content from this room will not be contained within these four walls. It's going to be carried across on all the various platforms that Exchange for Media hosts, both online as well as offline.